BTS Gate Lab is the BTS turnkey ready to use solution for the multifactorial clinical gate analysis. Usually, BTS Gate Lab is equipped by different components, which are digitally integrated into the Smart DX box. All the recorded signals are automatically recorded in the same time and then processed in order to provide to the clinicians a complete evaluation about how the patient moves joints, uses muscle, and about which are the involved forces at the joint during walking. Usually, a gate lab is equipped by a set of infrared BTS MARDX cameras, which are able to cover the entire capture volume. Usually, eight SmartDX 6000 cameras are used. The infrared cameras are able to detect the position of the center of the reflective passing marker in a very precise way automatically. The markers are placed on the patient on different bony landmarks, depending on which is the biomechanical model used for the evaluation. The SmartDX cameras are able to capture the marker's movement and the system automatically performs the 3D reconstruction inside the 3D space. Then we have a set of three axial force plates, usually four or six BTS P6000, which form like a sensorized workway for the measurement of the ground reaction forces during walking. Then the small and light wireless 3MG probes allow recording the EMG activity of the muscle, and so their activation during the different phases of the gait cycle can be evaluated. Thanks to the fully wireless technology, we can provide the maximum freedom of movement to the patient during the movement and the minimum setup time for the user. Then, a video controller composed by two or more Vixta cameras, which are used to record a synchronized patient moving from different point of view. The system normally includes different clinical biomechanical models to measure the 3D joint kinematics, the 3D joint kinetics, and the muscle activation pattern of the patient during walking. The protocols included into the gate lab are all widely supported by the international scientific community and mentioned in a lot of paper. The core of the system is the SmartDX box that by digital integration is able to manage in the same time all the kinematic, the kinetics and electromyography and the video data originated by its connected system. BTS Gate Lab includes Smart Clinic, the user-friendly application designed for easily managing all the typical steps of the clinical gate analysis, starting from the system preparation through the data capture, then the data processing, up to the clinical report preparation. Thanks to Smart Clinic, all these steps can be easily performed also by non-technical staff. Now we are going to focus our attention on the preliminary steps required before starting with the data capture. This is the Smart Clinic application. As soon as we run Smart Clinic, the clinic database containing all the patient data will be open. On the upper part of the screen, there is the main menu, from where we can manage, for example, the database and open other different menu and options. The Smart Clinic toolbar allows running the more common function in a fast and easy way. As soon as the Smart Box is switched on, all the devices are automatically detected. All the basic settings and the function required for the system preparation are available by the Activate Smart button. By clicking on the Smart Activation button, a window will open from where the different devices can be managed. By this window, we can enable or disable the different devices, depending on which of them will be really used during the data capture. By default, kinematics and force plate or dynamics are always enabled. To enable or disable a device, I can click with the left mouse button on the corresponding box. A component will be active or enabled when the corresponding box background will be colored in gray and disabled or not active when the corresponding box will be white. On the kinematics box, we have displayed all the cameras with their ID number. 
They are usually all active. That means that all or are displayed in green color. If I select a given camera with the left mouse button, I could disable or enable. Green is for enable and red will be for disable. Right there is the box devoted to the force plates or dynamics. The different force plates are also labeled with a different ID. They can be also enabled or disabled by click on the corresponding box with the left mouse button. Again, green is for enable and red will be for disable. By click on the force plate ID with the right mouse button, a window will open from where we can set up the force plates ranges on the different component and choose the offset reset modality. By default, it is set up to automatic, but the manual or disable option are also available if required. Before starting with a data capture, it is mandatory to have performed a complete 3D calibration procedure once at least. A complete 3D calibration will include both the cameras and the force plates calibration, if also the force plates are enabled. The camera 3D calibration is required to allow the 3D reconstruction algorithm to run and to transform the 2D coordinates measurement recorded by the single cameras in a precise 3D measurement. You could ask, how often have I to perform a 3D calibration in my lab? Well, because a good 3D calibration is the base of a good 3D reconstruction, it is important to calibrate once a day. If in your lab the camera are wall mounted, you should maybe avoid to do it so frequently. But as the 3D calibration procedure lasts more or less 2 or 3 minutes, it is really highly recommended to do that daily. By selecting the camera calibration button, the application will help us to follow the required steps. The static calibration, or capturing the axis position, and the dynamic calibration performed by a wand as shown on the software. The goal of the static calibration is to define the position and the orientation of the global reference system of the 3D workspace. That means to define the position of its origin and the orientation of its X, Y and Z axis. After the 3D reconstruction, all the marker's trajectory will be defined with respect to that global reference system. The static calibration has to be performed by means of a calibrated object, which has an origin and a different number of markers along its three perpendicular axes. The origin is at the vertex of the three axes, the four marker axes define the x direction, the three marker axes define the y vertical direction, and the two marker axes define the z. Where to place the static calibration object? theoretically in any place into the capture volume, but usually during a gate analysis with the use of the force plates, it is suggested to place the static calibration object in one of the force plate corners. For example, now I'm going to place the origin of the axis on this corner of the force plate number 2 with the x-axis aligned along the main working direction and the force plate long axis. Now, to start the calibration procedure, I can press the Acquire button. At first, I have to press the Monitor button to start the live monitor, and so I can check the single camera view. Remember that, during the calibration procedure, it's important to avoid the cameras having their field of view any phantom markers or markers that are different from the ones really on the calibration object. So please try to remove any disturbance if present in the capture volume. During the static calibration, the markers on the object have to be detected at least by two cameras of the entire set. By pressing the Acquire button, or capture, 
I start the capture. It is suggested to record the position of the static calibration object for 3 or 5 seconds. To stop the data, I can click again on Capture and then I can click on Save to store the recorded data. Now we are, we are again on the calibration window. The axes have been already recorded and we are ready to start the second calibration step, that is the dynamic calibration. The dynamic calibration has to be performed by a 3 marker wand that is the y-axis of the static calibration object. Remember that, before starting with this step, the static calibration object has to be removed out from the camera field of view. To start the dynamic calibration, I have to press the Acquire button and then Monitor to open the Live Monitor. By selecting the Capture button, we start the data capture. During the dynamic calibration, the user has to move the calibration wand inside the capture volume, trying to have as much as possible the markers wand visible by the cameras for the maximum number of frames. It is suggested to move the wand in every position and orientation inside the capture volume, trying to fill in every volume portion. Avoid to have the body hiding the wand markers on the camera's field of view and keep it the more visible you can. Don't wear reflective accessories during this step. After the user has filled with the wand the entire capture volume, we can start the data capture by clicking on Capture again and then we can save the recorded data by clicking on Save. Now we are ready to run the calibration algorithm to get the required calibration parameter. With the calibration, the linearization to remove the lens distortion and all the parameters required to the 3D reconstruction algorithm are computed. During the processing, as soon as the camera residual values go below a threshold, the algorithm will stop and all the residual error for the different cameras will be shown on the screen. For example, in this case, we got residual values in the range of 0.1 mm, so that means that the reconstruction will be very precise. To save the results, we can click on Save. Now, because also the force plates are active in the hardware setup, the application is going to ask if it is decided to perform also the 3D force plate calibration. That means to define their position and orientation one with respect to the others. In general, also the three axial force plates have their own reference system with an origin and three perpendicular axes. For the BTS P6000, the origin is in the center of the force plate below its surface, and the axes are oriented in this way. Looking at the force plate with the connector at our right side, the X axis will be positive at our left, the Y axis will be forward and the vertical axis will be pointing down. By the reference system position is automatically defined the position of its four corners, which are numbered from corner number 1 up to corner number 4. The corner number 1 is on the connector left side, and the other corner will be numbered with a clockwise U. To summarize, the force plate orientation can be defined by mean of the reference system or by its corner position. If I click on Yes, from this window we have to draw which is the relative position of one force plate with respect to the other. For example, in this case, this is exactly the force plate position in this lab. If not, with the arrow you can move or rotate their position. Now I can click on Configure to save these settings and we are ready to start with the calibration of the force plate. First of all we have to place the static calibration object. Now we have to identify which is the corner number 1 of the force plate number 1. To do that I am now going to place on it the XZ axis of the calibration frame with the Z axis aligned on the force plate side containing the connector. That means that 
the z axis has to be aligned on the line between the first plate corner 1 and the corner number 4. From this window, by clicking on Start, the software will run the, the calibration data processing to get all the parameters about the force plate corner's position. We can click on Save to store the force plate 3D calibration parameter. Now we are ready to start DMG device preparation. First of all, the FreeMG1000 USB receiver has to be plugged in any of the USB ports available on the Smart DX box. A USB extension is suggested to be used. We can enable the EMGRT device by clicking with the left mouse on Xbox and then we have to perform the probe activation. To activate the probe, they have to be unplugged from the charger and then slide over the magnet. As soon as the probe is active, its white LED should start blinking. Now, by selecting the setup button, the protocol builder window will open. From this window, I can create a new protocol by clicking on U or I can select an already defined one. For example, now I'm going to select this generic 6 channel protocol and then to have it active on the FreeMG USB receiver, I have to click on the set active button in order to have it active. Now I have to click yes to confirm. Now we are ready to start. Pay only attention that the number of the channels defined on the selected protocol have to really correspond to the number of probes which have been activated. Now the last step is to check the video controller. If I click on Proper or Properties, a window will open from where I can see the real view of each Vixta camera. In case you need to change the visualization of one of the camera, for example of the camera number one, you can first of all adjust the size of the corresponding blue box by selecting and resizing it with the mouse. Then, if you double click with the mouse on the blue box related to that camera, you will get its full preview image. By clicking on it with the right mouse button, you can now select the option Adjust Clipping and by moving the window that appears, you can choose the video portion you prefer. Click on OK to save the settings and again OK to exit.